what is happening everybody welcome back to the dream catchers fishing channel kicking off another video in the truth series and uh you know i just really wanted to come on in this video today and talk about a few things that are really near and dear to my heart and that is uh my business uh the work we've put in and the brand we've established uh haters uh, and the industry in general because this industry oh my goodness more than any other industry that I'm really aware of but I'm sure it's happened in every industry has just ridiculous amounts of jealousy and hate and a lot of people really have a lot of opinions and it's understandable you know because everybody's coming from different walks of life and so many things have you know so many people have different perspectives because of different things in life uh, you know but I had a good friend of mine uh, come up to me uh, while in the shop a little while back, and he's like, he's like, man, you know, what are you doing for reputation mending? And I'm like, reputation mending, like, what's up? What, what, what do I need to mend? Like, what, what, what do people say about me? And I've always seen things thrown around on uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram, these other outlets, and people just hate. And, and the reality is people people are gonna there's always gonna be haters you know uh, I had a wise man once tell me if you ever try to be anybody in this world you're gonna have haters and he said if you want everybody to like you then be a nobody so I knew at a very young age like I wanted to maximize my life I wanted to I wanted to be the best person I could be I wanted to be the best fisherman I could be one day be the best husband be the best father best business owner best teammate best everything. I hold myself in very high regard. Some people may even call that being egotistical. And I would say, yeah, I mean, I think people who have big egos expect a lot out of themselves and they don't fail. They won't let themselves fail. And yeah, I, I've always had a high work ethic, a lot of energy. And honestly, it totally, it does definitely push people the wrong way sometimes. Uh, I can be uh, aggressive, definitely at times to say the least. Um, I can be unapologetic. I can be very polarizing. In fact, I've even had people tell me I'm a lot like Donald Trump. Um, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, I can see that. Trump has haters, obviously. But now the funny thing is, I think a lot of the people that love Trump hate me. Being brash and saying, saying how I feel. And listen, I know I can rub people the wrong way. And hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a man and I'm, I'm wiggling my way through life trying to figure everything out. I'm a high E, I'm highly emotional, uh, I'm very passionate. Uh, when things are going really good, they're going great. And when things are going bad for me, they're going terrible. So, you know, I've always tried to get off this roller coaster of life and try to really mellow myself out to be, uh, you know, more of an even keel person. But the reality is, sometimes I can't do that. And it's just not me. Sometimes I'm pumped up and fired up, and sometimes I'm absolutely down in the dumps. And I think it's easy to be on the other side of the screen right now and draw conclusions and have opinions about me. And I, and I say that as, as I have opinions about me, to be 100% honest with you. I mean, I just shared some with you. Um, you know, but what people have to remember that's really unique about what I do and what the business does, there's not many businesses like this business in America. And you say, oh, yeah, there is. There's other tackle shops. Totally. There's other tackle shops. Oh, there's other guide businesses. Yeah, there's other guide businesses. Oh, there's other YouTube channels. Totally right. There are other YouTube channels. There are very few small town USA tackle shops who also guide on a local level and produce YouTube content that is consumed globally. It's weird. I, I get that. It's, it's weird. You know, I, this is the thing. I have never, and I really mean it, outside of Rooster, who I got in a fight with in the store and knocked out three of his teeth, I have never done anything personally and even knowledgeably to hurt anybody. To hurt anybody. I never, what sense would that make as a small business owner, uh, someone whose name is on the line? Like, no one ever sets out to hurt somebody intentionally. So I've never personally done anything to hurt somebody. Which then makes me think like, hey, why is there hate coming back at me? And I have some opinions, you know, I think, I think, uh, hear, hear me out. I have a lot of people tell me, man, Austin, you have a dream job, or hey, I wish I could be you, or I wish I could be in your position. And I think there's this 
underlying animosity for some people that see what we do and we have a lot of success guys we do I, I i can't hide that we catch a lot of big bass i mean we do we throw big swim baits we have great content like, i feel like we put out great content that's an opinion but you might say your content's dog crap you, you, you might be right too right it's your perspective but i can see now listen if you say hey that austin near and dream catchers they're a bunch of pos you know the only thing i could see it really being over is one ruining the lakes or blowing up bites. I've had a lot of people say, oh, well, people don't like you because you've ruined a bite. And you know what? I'm not I'm not going to disagree with that. I'm going to take ownership as a man and say, you know what? There are some lakes that have taken an absolute pulverizing beating. Who does it hurt more? Obviously, guys are wanting to get out there and capitalize on a bite, but I'm, I'm the one that's making the video and the content Everybody sees where I'm fishing, which means I, when I go back on the water with customers, guess what? It happens all the time. I run into boats there. I run into boats there and I run into boats there, all these different spots. And, and yeah, I absolutely did it to myself. So I understand I'm the one that blew it up or ruined the bite or whatever you want to say, you know, and I know it hurts everybody, but it also hurts me because I'm the one that's out there trying to provide a service to customers every day. So I get it. But like I said, I'll take ownership to I've ruined and blown up some bites. But in that regard, I will say this, the same people that have said, quote, he has ruined the bite are also people that I have personally educated with the YouTube channel to the bite. So the same people that want to throw my name under the bus and say he blew up the bite are also the same people that I genuinely feel like should at least say thank you or, or something. I didn't even have to say thank you. I just want that respect to say, hey, man, listen, the guys from Southern Trout Eaters really turned a lot of heads to big swim baiting in the South. They left and I saw a niche market business for guiding people. And I serviced what they created. They made their video and they left. And they left this huge niche market that I, as an entrepreneur, a businessman, a forward thinker, said, wow, there's a niche right here. I think I can present a business strategy to encompass what those guys were doing and service it through a guide business, a tackle shop, a YouTube channel. So the bite, the bite was kind of exposed, but I definitely showed a lot of eyes to it. With that being said, a lot of guys that want to say, man, he has ruined these lakes, there should be some kind of respect level to say, hey, he also showed me that what he's doing, he's fishing different. And guys, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to brag, but we have won a lot of tournaments and we have done really well, and we have a lot of special days with customers. I'm, I, you can't, I can't hide that as a business. That's just, those are, that is truth, you know. So, in in one regard, we've ruined and blown up bites, but in the other regard, the same people that are complaining about that, I turned on to a lot of bites, you know. So there's a certain respect level there, and like I said. Think about it from my perspective, though. You know, a lot of these guys that are haters that are saying, you blew up a lake, you did this, they work a nine to five at uh, uh, this job or that job, or they're a mechanic or an HVAC guy or work in a factory, whatever. But the reality is, this is my business. I have to market. I have to make content so I can put food on the table for my wife. My dad works for me. My my. I have a boy, a child. I like I have family that I need to provide for. So, you know, think about think about it from my perspective. If I didn't make any content and I didn't market my business or I didn't do any of these things, I wouldn't be able to put food on the table. Not only that, there'd be a lot of things that people don't know about. So it's a double-edged sword. Yes, did I ruin some lakes? I, I I'm I'm telling you right now, I'm taking ownership of that. There's some bites that I've blown up, and I apologize. I do. Look, look at me in my eyes. I apologize. I am sorry. On the other hand, this is my business. Think about the fishing industry. Whether you're a professional fisherman, you're a guy that works for, you name a business, you have to create content. This is where I live. This is my home. I've lived here in Western North Carolina longer than I have anywhere in my life. This is home for me. These are the lakes I fish, and content is made on these lakes, and it just is what it is. It's, it's a necessary, unnecessary evil at the same time, you know? I've got to provide for my family. And some people are super thankful. Some people are like, man, and, and I've always had the perspective of like, these aren't my fish. Like, I am a passer-thruer of this world. 
ultimately, as a Christian, end goal is heaven, right? And these fish are not my fish. They're not your fish. They are God's fish used to worship Him. That's how I believe, deep down in my heart. So ultimately, did I ruin bites? Yeah, I mean, you could argue that, you know. But at the same time, I also think that I showed a lot of people how to have have amazing days on the water. And, uh, you know, real in their dream catch. That is, that's my business name, right? Dream Catchers Fishing, because I aspire everybody to have a dream catch. My, I started this business because it was a dream for me to work in this fishing industry. And I know that everybody aspires to have a dream catch. And I want to be a part of that with you. I mean, if you ask anybody who knows me, and listen, listen, I'm going to tell you this. Never judge another man based on another man's opinion. Never judge a man based on another man's opinion. If you know me personally, you know that I deeply care about people. I mean, I was just in the shop with a customer who spanked my bottom at a tournament earlier this year. And I was like, man, I'm so pumped up for you. That was so cool. It was the best display of fishing I've ever seen on this specific. He spanked everybody. He whooped me. He whooped everyone in the field. Him and his partner, who I'm really good friends with, they crushed everyone. And I went up and said, man, congratulations. That is so awesome. They're both great customers of our store. And I'm pumped up for them. And I really believe this. If you can't cheer for other people, I mean, don't expect other people to cheer for you. And and here's the deal, I understand it. As the rest of the field, you're upset. You're processing what just happened. You know, maybe you lost the big fish. Maybe your line broke. Maybe you had equipment failure. Maybe uh, you didn't make the best decisions and you're internalizing that and processing that. But in the same regard, you're not congratulating other people. And there's just like this whole looming cloud of, of just resentment and and all this beat up almost like a jealousy uh towards towards the guy who wins and i'm just like guys when you live a selfish life you make everything about yourself so that means if other people are successful when you're not there's a jealousy that's associated with that it's what i call the idolization and demonization when you idolize something you demonize the opposite thing. So if you idolize your success, God forbid someone else has success, you demonize them, right? But you can never fill this emptiness in your heart of selfishness because you could win all the tournaments in the world and guess what? You're still gonna wanna win more. It is like the malignant cancerous part of the human heart that desires more and more stuff. And that's why ultimately if you live for yourself, you can never have true fulfillment. And that's why if you live life for others, and that's what I'm saying, my dream catch is seeing fathers and sons make memories. It's seeing best friends make memories. It's seeing husband and wives enjoy days on the lake. Like that's my dream catch. And that's what I seek to do. I seek to encourage people, like really cheer for them and pump them up, serve them, come in and help them, and then uh, inspire them. Like I wanna see people, like I'm catching big fish, let me show you that you can do it too. And, and that's what it's about. So then it kind of goes into this, when people have this, uh, deep demonization or even like a jealousy that other guys are winning there's like this underlying resentment and i was watching a podcast a podcast clip the other day uh from joe rogan with uh another fella and i just want you to watch this because this is where i think a lot of people are it's such a big thing i mean there's a lot of haters over here too sure but, but there is this sense that there are paths to victory that you can work really hard and yeah. if you have a vision and you get to that pinnacle of success, people will celebrate you. Like, look yeah. at him, he went for it. Absolutely, and that, and that respect for the fact that if you put the work in, yeah. you, then you, you deserve the rewards. Yeah. And, um, and you haven't made other people feel worse. You've made them feel more optimistic about what they could achieve. Yes. That's just a great thing about America, and I, it is still there. Yeah, I think it's still they there. They haven't too. killed that. They haven't killed that. But there's some people that don't like that because they're fing lazy and they, they are never going to be that exceptional person. So they will rail against exceptional people. Well, you know, that's. Um, uh, I write a chapter in The War in the West on resentment, which I think is a huge, mm. huge human driver, which has only one answer to it. As I say in the book, it's gratitude, is to turn around resentment into gratitude. Mm. But resentment is one of the biggest drivers that human beings have. And I was reading a lot on, on the nature of resentment for this book. And uh, I found a very powerful passage in Nietzsche where he says that um, one of the only ways to deal with the person of resentment, as he describes it, is, he says, to, to turn around to the person and to say, you are correct. There is a reason why you have resentment. There is a person you need to blame. There is a reason why your life isn't what it is meant to be. The reason is you. 
Now, the problem is that is the last thing anyone wants to hear. Mm. But it is the most important thing that a person filled with resentment should hear. You are the person you have become because that's you. Yeah. It wasn't other people. We all in our lives have so many reasons to feel resentment every day. Well, especially day. when you reach a certain age, there's so many decisions that had to be made. Right. Made to get you to, to whoever you are at 45 years old. How many decisions did you make to be who you are now? How many times did you fuck it up? Absolutely. How many times did you stay in bed and hit the snooze button? How mm -hmm. many times did you not take a risk, not take right. a chance when people around you did and they became wildly successful? How much anger do you have towards them instead of recognizing that you had made an error and right. now uh, it's time to use that information and apply it to the rest of my life? Absolutely. They don't do that because that's painful. It's much, much more painful, much easier to take the other route. But it is, it is like societally as well as individually, it is the toughest pill, but it is a necessary pill sometimes to swallow. Well, it also, it also depends what you prioritize in your life. Yes. And I suspect like me, you, like you always prioritize having freedom. Yes. Right. It's everything. Yeah, same for me. There's a phrase of Philip Larkins I'm very fond of. He describes people who get shunted to the edge of their own lives. Mm. And you, I, I managed to make sure at an as early a stage as possible I didn't get pushed to the edge of my own life. But if most people, if you say to them, what is it you really want to be, they're embarrassed to tell you at a certain stage because of the dream of what... The, no, it's not even a dream. The vision of what they thought they were going to be in their lives is too different from the reality mm. that they don't want to admit it. And often that vision is, is perfectly achievable. It's not like I want to be the new Marlena Dietrich. It's, I, I want to work in this business, in this area of work, not that one. Yeah. And, and, but I, I hate it when you see people who, and that's the people who become really resentful is, I, I thought I could achieve it and I never bothered to try to take the risk. Mm. And then all of a sudden you're 60. You're 60 and you And thought, it's not going to ever happen. And you've kind of wasted your life and you're filled with resentment. And yeah. in order to not think about that, you concentrate on other people and you're just angry about other people all the angry, time. Angry about other people and angry about how fast it all went. You know, well, that's yes. my favorite thing. Norm MacDonald's book, is the, the, the semi-memoir book, he says, it's a beautiful phrase somewhere, he says, the, the only thing a young man can say, and the only thing an old man can say to a young man is, it goes fast, so fast. And the tragedy is that the young man will never believe him. Man, that was really heavy. That was really heavy, and I've seen this in this industry. I feel like sometimes um, there's people that have these insecurities within themselves, and what happens is they're so insecure about who they are and, and their life and decisions they've made, what they do is they project their insecurities into others, and it tends to be the people that are in the limelight. And we have a, a, a big YouTube channel, it's not huge, it's about 5,000 people, but because we're in the limelight and there's all this uh, social wave and, and, and lights and eyes on us, I just tend to be the brunt of the force. Um, and it's, it's part of it, but what I see is grown men they, that idolize themselves, they demonize other people, and they idolize themselves, and they demonize me, and they'll project their insecurities into me to make themselves feel better, you know? And like uh, the fellow that was on that podcast with Joe was saying, was they have this deep, deep, deep uh, kind of pain at, at their vision or what they wanted life to be, and their life didn't line up to what it was. So to make themselves feel better, they put other people down. And I just think that's a really crummy way to live. You can never be fulfilled when you live that life. And ultimately, the measure of a man is how many lives that man has impacted over the course of his life. That's the measure of a man. That is the true measure of a man, is how many lives did that man impact for the better over the course of his life. And I mean, that's where I'm coming from in this whole deal. I'm like, look, I'm really, at the end of the day, I go to sleep. I kiss my wife, I kiss my, I tuck my, bo my boy in, I wake up, I have three eggs every morning, I come to the shop, I attach the boat, I get fuel, I go to try to have a great customer service experience with my customers on the water, and then I come back to the store, I serve customers, love on customers, encourage them, inspire them in the store, uh, I make videos, go home, hang out with my family, love on my wife and kid, and do the same thing. I live really a relatively simple life, and I just have a lot of people that, and, and like I said, you know, can I be brash and can I be uh, opinionated and do I have a uh, misrepresented passion? Man, I do. I'm being honest. I do sometimes. And I'm here to tell you, whether you hate me or not, I still want you to succeed because that's who I am. I genuinely want to see people do well. I want people to maximize their life. This is my driving. This is my driving factor. When I look back at my life, I want to look back and say, 
man, look at all that I did. Look at all that we did with my family. Look at, look at, look at what we accomplished. And I want that to be everybody's, I want that to be everybody's driver, you know? I don't care who you are. I want you to be the best you you can be. But what I know is when people take their eyes off of their goal and start focusing on others, then their goals tend to not happen. They don't accomplish them. Bill Belichick once said, winners focus on winning and losers focus on winners. I just want to wake up and provide excellent customer service to my people on my guide trips and in my store and make fun content for people to enjoy. I'm focusing on winning. That's my business model. That's my plan. I'm going to focus on winning. And uh, if people want to focus on me, I'm just telling you, your eyes are on the wrong thing. Put your eyes on your goals. Put your eyes on your mission. Put your eyes on your dream. Just like dream catchers, man. Put your eyes on your dreams and go catch them, man. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to encourage. I'm here to serve. I'm here to inspire. And that's what I really care to do. So I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching this video. I know it was really long. And uh, yeah, I, I comment down. Tell me you hate me. It Really, join the, join the long list of people that do. But uh, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching this. I'm out.